and welcome back to the channel. This is Thomas Goes Nostalgic, and on this episode, we're going to be building a trippy forest diorama for our Super 7 Grateful Dead Dancing Bears. And once again, welcome back to the channel. This is Thomas Goes Nostalgic. Now, I haven't posted much recently. I've been a little busy. I've had uh, a lot going on with work and I just got a new puppy so that's been pretty exciting so I've been taking my time with this one I was making it for a friend I saw that Super 7 had these dancing bears um, go up for sale uh, the set of six um, so they actually send you the tray that you would see in a retail store I thought it was pretty cool so I have four of them I already gave the other two to my friends um, so I thought it'd be cool to make a diorama for the dancing bears I'm gonna keep the green one for myself because I love green, but um, I wanted to build a space based on some pictures I've seen that these would look pretty cool. They're supposed to glow in the dark, so sometimes um, glow in the dark isn't as good as they say it is, but um, I think these would look cool under some black light. So if you've been watching my episodes when I first started this channel, um, I don't know if you noticed, but I try to at least learn one new skill with each new diorama so whether it's um, something as simple as carving brick using resin um, with this diorama I wanted to do a few new things so I haven't really worked with like moss or grass so I really want to do it um, trying out a new tool so I uh, purchased a static grass applicator so that was something that was completely new for me and then I wanted to make some trees and I've never made trees. I didn't know if I should use foam or what. So I've seen some techniques and I tried it out for myself. So going through this episode, you'll see how I built out this forest and I hope you like it. So first starting off with this diorama, I'm using XPS foam and I'm gonna layer it. So I have a half inch foam and a piece of one inch foam. And I'm gonna put that piece of half inch on top of the one inch. And I'm gonna cut a hole in it because that's where the pond will go. So using my hot wire tool, I'm kind of cutting on an angle so that the pond would go inward. And I just roughly drew out um, the shape of the bottom of the tree so I knew where those trees would go. Now I'm just gonna glue both pieces of foam together. I'm using Elmer's glue so I can cover the whole piece of foam, but I'll also use some hot glue just so it can seal pretty quick. Now the foam had a little bit of a bend, so I'm just weighing it down. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take some of the spackle and just spread it on the crack so that there is no seam for when I pour the resin. So I have a few more steps before I can get painting. I wanna go ahead and let that glue dry. I'm also gonna take these wooden dowels. That's gonna be my base for the tree. I wanna take my hot wire tool and just rough up the edges of this diorama. I want it to look like terrain or ground and I really don't want it to look so flat. But I'm also gonna seal the edges with some of that spackle as well. This way there's no seams going along the base of the diorama. So I already made one of the trees off camera and basically you just take that cardboard dowel and you wrap it in aluminum foil and then you use a whole lot of hot glue. So you can make the branches out of aluminum foil, shape them however you want, and you basically just keep laying hot glue on it. And that's gonna give you that real natural looking tree lines that, and all those creases and bark um, so that's what the hot glue will do. So I'll demonstrate that here. Now, just a fair warning, if you're going to make trees like this, it does take a lot of hot glue, and this does take a lot of time, but the end result comes out really awesome. And just a fair warning, this does take a lot of time, a lot of hot glue, but it comes out great. I did all my priming and some painting off camera. And then I worked on that pond. I put some pebbles in there and I did use my first application of static grass. It was a little too short, so I'm gonna put some longer grass on it, but I wanna start some dry brushing. I dry brushed the trees already. I just wanna dry brush the rim of the base of the diorama just so that it all has that same look. So I mentioned the first application of grass was too short, and I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but I'm putting Mod Podge 
on the already existing grass and here is where I will lay the longer blades of grass that I have. And here is the static grass applicator. So you basically just put the grass in the hopper, it takes two double A's and you take that metal prong to the base of the diorama and you just kind of sift some of the grass onto the glue that you laid down. So let's check that out. Luckily, adding the longer grass to the shorter grass happened to work well. Now this tool could be dangerous, so just a word of warning, you wanna make sure that you um, short circuit it and you don't want this to be live or touch your skin in any way. So you always wanna take the prong and touch that grill. You know, it's a little scary when it sparks, but you just wanna make sure there's no power in that tool when you're done. And we're gonna use polyfiber to create that tree cover. You just rip it out of the package. You can rip pieces off and then spread it on the branches of the tree. And it actually does look pretty lifelike um, from a distance, so it's pretty cool. Um, and then when that's done, I'll go ahead and sprinkle some um, small grated moss that I have as well. I'm just dabbing a little bit of Mod Podge onto the tree cover because this is where I'm going to sprinkle some of that loose moss that I have. It's really fine and small. Um, this was not a good idea when I tried to pour it on, but so I'll just sprinkle it on from here. And now for the fun part, we're going to take our A and B solution resin and make our mixture so that we can pour it inside the pond. Uh, my fear is that some of the UV paint won't shine through the, the resin, but I've done it before, so I think it'll work pretty well. I turned on that UV light just to see if it would still shine, and luckily all those colors still pop. So we're just going to pour this, let it sit for about 8 hours before we work on this diorama again. And another new skill that I'd like to work on is working with some of this modeling clay. It's oven baked clay. I'm making some mushrooms. You can kind of see that I've already made a few, but I just wanted to demonstrate on camera. This is not a technically hard thing to make, but this is a relatively easy product to work with. So once you're done with your piece, I actually just popped mine in the air fryer for 15 minutes and it came out pretty solid before I can start painting. I'm just using a pin vise to put a hole in because I'm going to use a pin to press it down to the foam and I'm making sure that all of these get a different color of UV paint. I'm almost done with this diorama, just wanted to turn the UV light on and see how all of the paint is reacting. It looks great and the last thing I want to do is start working on a backdrop. So I have no real plans for this, I'm just kind of making sort of a swirl or a trippy kind of vortex and I'm using all of the UV colors that I have and then this will just act as a cool UV reactive backdrop for this trippy forest. Alright folks now that the backdrop is complete this diorama is done. I had so much fun making this diorama. Once again, I like to try new things. So sculpting out of clay was completely brand new to me. Making trees was completely brand new and applying grass with that static grass applicator. That was something I was a little nervous about, but really cool. I think laying down grass is one of my new favorite things about building dioramas. Based on the reference photo, I think I got some of the cooler aspects. I added the mushrooms because I thought those were super cool. And then I love that this diorama is black light activated. So let's check that out. And there it is folks with the black light. It just looks super cool. I'm getting closer so you can see some of the details within the water. I put some black light UV acrylic paint in the pond and then I laid some acrylic down and you can still get some really nice glow coming from 
that acrylic paint from the resin, which is super cool. But let's check out these Super 7 Dancing Bears and get them on the diorama. So first, just want to take a look at the packaging. Um, these are super cool. I think they're just five points of articulation. But for these Dancing Bears, what else more do you need? Um, these are pretty awesome. There's all of them on the side. And then just some cool story about the Dancing Bears on the back. So pretty awesome. All right, so let's get these bears out of the package and get them up on the diorama. And these bears look awesome. So something else that I found when opening up these bears was that they actually come with a little figure stand that is the logo of the Grateful Dead. So that's really cool. And folks, just to give you all a look at these dancing bears and the UV paint, these look awesome. I wouldn't say they glow in the dark, but they're definitely pretty reactive with the UV light. I love how this came out. If you like this content, hit like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notifications of when I post my next episode. Until then, we'll catch you next time.